Hello everyone, Neil back once again with another film review for you, and today I will be taking a look at Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Martin Scorsese, written by Scorsese and Eric Roth. No spoilers, not at first. Okay, I'm going to talk about the plot, and then I'm going to score it, and then I'm going to spoil it at the end. I'm going to talk about what I thought about the ending, because to review a movie fully, you got to talk about, you know the movie, in hindsight, especially for people that have already seen it. So this review is obviously for those who have already seen it, but I will give it a score without spoiling it. Uh, if you don't want to know anything, though, like nothing that was in the trailers, because that's all I'm going to talk about, it's just the main, you know, bulk plot points here. If you don't want to know that, then, uh, <laughs> then turn away now. All right. All right, so let's move on to this very serious, intense drama. Whew, oh my goodness. Uh, so it's a long one. But a good one. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, Lily Gladstone in a breakout performance, Jesse Plemons and Brendan Fraser also appear here. It is based on the 2017 book by David Gran uh, about the murders at the Osage Nation in Oklahoma in the 1920s uh, after discovering oil had uh, made them all wealthy, they were uh, wiped out. And I uh, love historical dramas. I love movies set 100 years ago that are full of tragedy with uh, certainly a, a nice healthy dose of truth in there, because uh, a lot of this is apparently true, and it's, uh, you know, that makes it very unsettling, very disturbing. And it's a very unpleasant story, you know, it's an unpleasant history lesson. And because of its length as well, it may not be doing that well at the box office lately. I think it's going to do much better on home streaming. Um, I, I really do. I, I think that way people can just, you know, pause and go to the bathroom, you know, and come back and, and uh, whatnot. But, uh, but please stay off your phones, for God's sake. If you watch this at home, stay off your phones. Stay glued to the screen, because uh, it's worth it, you know, despite its length. And uh, I think it will be popular due to the word of mouth and the performances and, and everything. Uh, you know, and, and it does show some respect as well to uh, the Osage Nation, as it should, of course. Uh, the film is dedicated to the late, great Robbie Robertson, who scored the film. Uh, and it is uh, really this uh, wonderful uh, score uh, that actually hits the emotion button, for sure. Uh, so Robbie Robertson, I mean, he was a genius and, uh, you know... A member of the band and all that stuff, and, and just, yeah, he was fantastic. Uh, definitely definitely watch any documentaries you can about him or the band, uh, known as The Band. Uh, so, the story begins after World War I, and Ernest Burkhart, played by DiCaprio, is coming home to work for his uncle William King Hale, and that's De Niro. Uh, his brother Byron also lives with Hale, who... Uh, is not a good person. Uh, these nephews are not uh, very smart or very brave or very cool at all. Uh, yeah. Hale does a really good job of pretending to love the uh, the natives, the, the Osage people, and uh, obviously he's just scheming, like, he's just, like, salivating at the chance to, to get their oil rights, you know, and uh, he tells Ernest to court Molly Kyle an Osage woman whose family owns headrights to the oil. So Ernest does fall in love, and he marries Molly, whose entire family is being targeted by Hale so that the oil rights would eventually be inherited by Ernest and his family, and therefore Hale. So it's just like, whoa, it's just... Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, super evil. Uh, <laughs> greed and selfishness and evil, and... Um, well, the couple, they do really do seem to love each other, you know? These little these little quaint, you know, old-fashioned love scenes, they, they do work very well, and uh, they wind up having kids, too, as well. Um, now, unfortunately, with all these murders going on, you know, just, oh, geez, someone else just happened to die. It's like, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, but the local police are, they're so corrupted that they do nothing, of course, so it seems that there's, there's really no justice for Molly and her people. Uh, will they get the justice for these murders? Well, I'll tell you soon. So, Scorsese tells a good story in his Scorsesean way. <laughs> uh, he really knows his beauty shots, and he 
he may be the best ever at shooting an assassination scene, you know, murder scene. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it really stays with you, a lot of these scenes. Um, some silly comments online I've seen, they're like, you know, is it a white guilt movie? Is it about hating white people? No, it's not. Not really. I mean, there are some good white people in this film, too. Uh, Jesse Plemons' character, for example. You'll see. Uh, but it's more about greed and uh, murder, you know, really more about greed than anything, honestly, than any hate or racism. Um, you know, I, there is some of that, of course, though. I mean, it is 100 years ago. You know, the whites thought that the natives were were incompetent with their money. So, ah, they can't handle that, so we're going to take, like, ugh, you know, it's that kind of old, terrible story, unfortunately, right? Um, so, it, it does. It really hits hard. It's a darn good movie. It's long. It may be too long for for some people, but I think it just builds everything so well and some of these performances are so great from the three leads especially. So I'm going to give Killers of the Flower Moon an 8.5 out of 10. Spoilers! Spoiler alert! All right, you've been warned. At one point in the story, Hale actually instructs Ernest to poison Molly's insulin provided by corrupt doctors uh, so that Ernest will solely inherit everything, you know, the wealth. And Ernest does, I mean, he really does seem to love Molly and the kids, but he bows to this pressure from his uncle, you know, he's, he's, he's really a selfish coward in the end, you know, uh, much like the, uh, the other antagonists in the film, really, and, uh, and after the last of Molly's relatives are killed off, Molly is left as the, the sole beneficiary, but but she's weak from the poisoning. And um, despite this, though, she does manage to get to the president of the United States, and she pleads for help. And uh, this uh, bureau investigation agent, uh, Thomas Bruce White Sr., I believe, he's played by Jesse Plemons, uh, he uncovers the truth. And he gets this confession out of Ernest, who, uh, who winds up turning on his uncle after, uh, after one of his children dies. You know, that, that kind of um, solidifies his decision. And uh, Hale and Ernest get, uh, they get life sentences, uh, though neither of them are fully served. Uh, it is revealed that Molly later divorced Ernest. And, uh, I mean, he, he loved her, but he was a liar, right? Uh, so he got what he deserved, I suppose, in the end. And, uh, and she died at the age of 50 in 1937, as, uh, uh, and she seems to, as she seems to have requested no mention of the, uh, the murders in her obituary, probably because she didn't want to be remembered for her, you know, for all the grieving and, and tragedy, and she wanted to be, be remembered for her accomplishments, right, in, in life, so... Um, Scorsese himself, actually, Martin Scorsese, plays the uh, the man on the radio telling that part of the story. So, the film is long, yes, yes, and that may turn some people off, but it really builds its characters and situations really well. And, you know, for film lovers, for filmmaker lovers, you know, it's a real treat, honestly. Uh, De Niro is a complete chameleon here. I almost didn't recognize him. Like, I knew it was him, but he's just, he's so good that it's just... Wow, it's just, it's kind of like Anthony Hopkins and other actors, you know, Pacino, etc. Guys that can just disappear into these characters, even though we know their face so well. Um, <laughs> anyway, he's fantastic, uh, playing this man corrupted by selfish greed and a total, total, complete indifference for the lives of uh, these people. And uh, yeah, he's just this lying tyrant, right? I mean, that's it doesn't get more evil than that, really. Uh, you know, murdering for... For, for the sake of greed and for, oh my goodness. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of his best performances, I think. Uh, DiCaprio as well, uh, he gives us this this character, Ernest Burkhart, who, uh, who he does merit, a, a, you know, a thimble full of sympathy here. Um, but he still, he makes the wrong choices and we watch him make the wrong choices out of fear and it's, it's, uh, it's just so sad. So sad when people make big life-changing decisions out of fear. Um, DiCaprio, he's very good, as always, um, you know. And Gladstone, though, I must say, she may be the standout here as she has to go through the gauntlet, uh, you know, of, of emotions after all these tragedies and injustices against her family. Um, she's just excellent in the role. Don't be surprised if you see her get nominated for awards. I think she would deserve it. 
And uh, Plemons and Fraser, too. I mean, they're both really good, too. Um, Fraser actually plays uh, William King Hale's lawyer. And, uh, you know, the cast as a whole is great. It's fantastic. Uh, it can be a little slow at times. I mean, you, you know, this is a historical drama, you know. It's not action 24-7. But I, uh, I, I really do recommend it when it hits home streaming. And I definitely recommend that you put away some time and watch it, even if you got to watch it in two parts or something, you know, if that's easier, just like The Irishman, you know, that's what I did, and I, I enjoyed it even more. It was a little easier to digest, uh, but it's worth it. Well worth the time. So, again, I'm giving Killers of the Flower Moon an 8.5 out of 10. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this film review. And until next time... Peace.